What's up everyone, it's Angel Green and I'm here with the band. I was probably on a whole bunch of mixtapes that said My Summer Hits 2002 because this of course is New Found Glory. I'm here with Jordan and Cyrus. Yep, hello. Dudes, thanks How you for doing? being with me, man. I'm great, man. Awesome. With Good. you guys. So, the band formed in 1997. Which I was born in 1997. <laughs> so how so does you've it, been a fan since day one. Yeah. Since I'm a newfound baby. There you go. <laughs> how does it feel to be talking with a kid that was born the same year the band was conceived? Um, that is pretty weird, man. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, but it's not because, like, for example, we've been on this tour since, I don't know, we left in, like, May. Yeah. And it's been crazy to see, like, the, the ages on this run. Like, there's kids from, like, seven and eight and years old to like you know people our age which is like 26 right <laughs> you know what I'm saying so it's crazy and I, and I love that I love that yeah. that you were you were born when the record came when we started the band I was 17 when we started the band well Cyrus was same age was 16 17. Or 17 so I mean we started the band when we were young so people yeah. think we're like old but we're really yeah not that old, but. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah growing up in the industry at 17 being in a pop punk genre was there ever a point where you guys were just straight up living the punk lifestyle um, if by punk lifestyle you mean like living in squalor, no. <laughs> <laughs> no? Yeah, do we, uh, um, are we all amazing, like, even pop punk, are we all amazing skateboarders and eat pizza every day? <laughs> Not necessarily. You don't want to yeah. see me on a skateboard or else I probably won't be able to we, play drums anymore. Yeah. So. We would be, like, we would, we would leave for a tour, and we, I mean, and granted, when we first started touring, we toured in like a, a U-Haul, like, box truck, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. With like the divider of the cab and the back of the box truck, like, with the divider slid open. Uh -huh. And like, so we had like beanbag chairs and stuff in the back of the box truck, which yeah. is super unsafe. Yeah, don't yeah. do that. Don't do that when you first Definitely start touring. Not. But and the people in the front would be like driving with like snow gloves and snow gear on because they had to put the AC on full blast so it would hit the back oh, of the wow. box truck. We were we'd go on tour and we'd still come back home and go back to our parents' house and still okay. have to like take the trash out and like do chores when we got home. Yeah, so that was like. And I wouldn't necessarily call it the punk lifestyle, but we were definitely <laughs> yeah, the punk a bunch thing, of punks. I guess the punk thing was when we went on tour. You know, we we like are from that DIY kind of world. Yeah. Where it's not like we wrote a song and a radio station found us immediately. Yeah, yeah. We had to go get that song popular by playing shows anywhere yeah. and everywhere we could. And so we did things like what Jordan said: get in a U-Haul truck yeah, with and drive days. ourselves all the way up to New Jersey for like one show on a weekend and then come back to Florida. Yeah, 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 yeah. Crazy things like that. You look back at it and it's like, what were we even thinking when we right. did that? But <laughs> something worked doing that. So that was kind of the punk thing was, look, you don't rely on anybody else. If you want to like try to get yourself known or whatever, go do it yourself. The mm -hmm. best kind of like advertisement is us right there in front of somebody, yeah. handing them your own demo CD yeah. or having them come to see your show mm -hmm. and then trying to get them to go tell their friends to see you next time. Yeah. Stuff like that. So, well, uh, moving on. You guys just put out a new cover record called yeah. "From the Screen to Your Stereo." Yeah, it's basically three. part three. three. Part three. three. Yeah. yeah, it's basically where songs that are featured in movies that you guys covered. I think it's absolutely amazing. We're going to go through each song. You're going to tell me uh, whose idea it was to cover that song and why you guys covered the song. Okay. All right, we're going to start with number one song, "Cups" from uh, Pitch Perfect. Okay. Right? Okay. Explain. I mean, it's always. <laughs> Well, the thing with the songs is like, it's always sort of like, everyone gets to pick like when they want to do. Yeah. But I think for this last one, it was more like, what's going to, what's going to bring any type of age group to yeah. listen to this record? Yeah. You know? yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And actually before, so before we kind of get into this, I think we can start off by saying like, I, the tiger and power of love. Yeah. I think we knew a while ago we wanted to do those. Yeah. Like Jordan said, we were kind of thinking, well, this record we don't want to do all 80s movies because you do have kids that are younger, mm -hmm. you know, or uh, just people who the 80s movies might not have really been their thing. Yeah. So let's try to find some movies that are newer sure. and kind of like just, you know, spread it out. And the, the you know, kind of age groups that might know or be familiar with this yeah. material will, will be yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of where the idea is for let's find this song and this song. Okay. You know, so Pitch kind of Perfect is like a pretty big movie fan sure. franchise. That song got pretty mm -hmm. big, so that's why we picked that. All right, next one. This is me. Greatest Showman. Yeah. I'm sure one of you has kids that's obsessed with this movie? I, I have two. Well, we, have, we both have kids. But, yeah. Um, when they did bring it up, I was like, hell yeah, let's do that one. Because, like, I went and saw that movie with my kids. Yeah. And then they were obsessed with the soundtrack. And the yeah. soundtrack's awesome. And then yeah. when I think Chad was like, we should do this song, and I was like, 
Heck yeah, we should. It's like it would it would be awesome. So that's how that. Went. And yeah. for me, it was crazy because I literally had I, I had heard of the movie, yeah. but I never saw it. Even though I have kids, my kids are younger, and uh, yeah, so I never saw the movie. And then coincidentally, the night before, I recorded the drums. So yeah. after I'd already heard the song a whole bunch of whatever, but the night before I recorded the yeah. drums for that song, mm-hmm. I watched the movie, and I was like, this is actually a really good movie. <laughs> I should show my kids. They would probably yeah, yeah, it, yeah. So. Next one. The Power of Love, which we talked about, classic, Back to the Future, yeah. fantastic movie, fantastic song. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And Huey Lewis is a fantastic artist. So. Oh, right. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. just uh, it's that's a great song to play. Um, like I said, we, we tried it one time in San Francisco, not even thinking let's do it on our next cover record, but just yeah. let's cover it tonight for fun. I think, uh, was it like that's where some of the the news was from his band, backing band, or I don't even remember why like it was Denver. Denver. Denver, you're that's right. Sorry. The news is from Denver. Denver. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe some guys were from there or something. I don't remember. Yeah, why. I don't know why I said San Francisco. A little funny, more. interesting side story about that song is um, we got uh, our tour manager a few a few months. Uh, I'm sorry, weeks ago we played Minneapolis. We get it. We get a text saying or an email saying, "Hey, I am uh, Sean. What's his last name? I forget. It's the any long story short, keyboard player of the actual keyboard player from Huey Lewis on the News. Yeah, heard the song or his wife heard the song. He played it for him." And yeah. he was like, oh, this is awesome. Let's go to the show. So we met the keyboard player of Oh, Heroes that's and cool. Yeah. And he came to the show and was like, you guys killed it on that song. He's like, yeah. all the all the covers I've heard of that song, nobody plays the keyboard parts, right? And you guys play it. Right? Yeah. So I was like, yes. Yeah, we, we, we got for validated. Us. We got that's validated. So, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's cool. Like, yeah. uh, after that show happened, a few days later, um, his wife emailed again, our tour manager, and was like, we had such a great time at the show. Um, Sean bought my myself and our kids uh, tickets and meet, meet, VIP meet and greets to like another oh, show. Nice. Flights and, all and, stuff, flights yeah. and everything. <laughs> I talk about sing-alongs. I bet no matter who you are, people are going to sing along to this next one. Let it go. Uh, this song, I can actually, I listened to it a couple of times. First time I've listened to that song back to back. You know what's funny about that song? So I think part of the reason why we picked that, not only because it's a Disney song, it's like let's just try it and see what happens. and. You know, we'll punk it up so it's not kind of like yeah. the original. But also, it punk that it goes back to the original idea for our first kind of movie cover, oh, which yeah. was the theme from Titanic. Oh. And the theme from Titanic at that time, back in like 98, yeah. was all over the radio. And it was that song that you either loved or you, hated. Or you were so yep. against it. Yep. And so it was like, it's, it's everywhere. We should take this and make it a version that we could at least stand, right? That it's not yeah, as bad. Yeah. And so that was the original idea for the Titanic song and why we kind of sped that up. And I think Let It Go is the same thing. So it's like, look, this is like a slow, just Disney song. Let's make it fast. Let's punk it up. And we did. You did. And like I said, I listened to it and I'm like, I can stand this song now. Yeah. <laughs> and I think what I love what I love to see every night is during like the beginning of the first chorus, it's, you know, we, we try to get the crowd to kind of sing along. And I'm just looking out to see the people that are singing along and knowing that most of those people would never want to be caught right. <laughs> singing that <laughs> song. It's like all these hardcore kids like totally. Mosh. Right? Totally. <laughs> yeah. To let it go. Is it, yeah. Oh, I love this one. Accidentally in Love from yeah. Shrek 2. I love that song by the, I think it was Counting Crows, right? Yeah. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. I, I don't remember whose idea. You know, maybe it was just the fact that, look, we did Frozen, so we did an animated movie, and let's not just only have one animated movie. Let's let's do Shrek is like the animated movie that if you really think about it, it's kind of for adults. And yeah. The yeah, humor right. in that movie is yeah. <laughs> and all of us obviously know, you know, And the production is so crazy on the original song, so we and we tr- I I personally like wanted to have like a lot of the harmonies that they did on the original uh-huh. on our version. Uh, yeah. come on, so come we on. tried to like do it all, man. Like, it was crazy. Yeah. yeah, we sat there oh, and we kept yeah. listening to the original yeah. in like really really nice uh, speakers in the studio to be like what are they doing there? Oh man, there's this weird tambourine there. There's a clap there. Yeah. And he's singing this harmony. And we tried to kind of put all of it on ours. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. What's next? A Thousand Years. What movie is this from? From Twilight. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want any interview? But dude, the, 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 the song was huge. I mean, what's the, Christina Perry was her name? Yeah. Oh, uh-huh. Dude, that was like did it. Yeah. such a big song. And I mean, those movies and the books, I mean, they were like... Robert Pattinson is so dreamy. Right? I mean, <laughs> this my favorite one, obviously. I have the Tiger from Rocky 3. Rocky, Rocky 3. 3. Yeah. So, I have the Tiger is already a fast, heavy song for its time. For its time, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. And they're all like walking down the street. They're like their shirts tucked in and stuff. Yeah, yeah, with their uh, the berets. Their berets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so why did y'all go, all right, let's take this song that's already kind of heavy and make it punkier. I think because we knew we knew it was gonna sound great, 
as like a punk rock song. It's almost like if you just put yourself in that mode of like like bands like Propagandi or some of those kind of old school epitaph, like mm. even Fat Records fast bands, fast. like that is, it literally, the song already sounds like it. It's yeah, just it their drummer of, uh, of who, who did it? Survivor. Of, Survivor. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. their drummer just played a slow beat instead, <laughs> yeah. but he could have done a fast beat. Yeah, it just wouldn't have worked in the 80s, you yeah. know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, and that was a song that, like I said, that before we even stepped foot in the studio, we did that song. It was before our uh, the tour, the sick tour from like about a year ago. Mm. We were in pre-production, and it's like, hey, I think we should play this cover. It would be a cool thing because nobody's ever heard us yeah. play it. Yeah, yeah. We know we're gonna want to record it, mm. and we'll just play it all tour. And we did. We yeah. came out in our encore and played that song, and it was cool to like have a song that we had already played for two months straight, uh -huh. going into the studio to actually record it after that. So we got to kind of work out all the kinks while we were on stage, Yeah, which is fun. I saw this on Chad's story right before I showed up. There was, I think, something out in the lobby, but it said, Newfound Glory is eligible to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I just saw that. Yeah, 2020. Oh, why do you think you guys should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? <laughs> Ooh, I don't know, I never thought about that before. I, I think just because we've definitely like, stay true to who we are, you know, for sure. all these years. Yeah, I, I don't think the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame <laughs> has to necessarily, you don't have to be the band that sells the most records or any of that stuff, but you're looking for bands that really have kind of like shaped music. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just feel like what we did at the time that we did it, yeah. it was something different, right? And you look now and there are a lot of bands, and this is crazy even to think about to this day, there are a lot of bands that the influence musically or just in general, whatever, is from our band. Yeah. And when we started, we looked up to bands yeah. in the same way. So yeah. for it to kind of come full circle, um, you know, I would absolutely love to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's one of those things. Like, I think anything you do, if there's a legit Hall of Fame, whether it's sports or whatever, yeah. like, that's nuts. That's a legacy right there. I think it's 25 years after your first major label yeah, release yeah, yeah, yeah. is when you're eligible. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that, that would be an insane kind of Are achievement. Are we eligible? Uh, 2022. 2022. 2022. Uh, <laughs> is 25 years after our first record. That's so weird. Dang, yeah, 25 years. That yeah. sounds so weird. I'll right? be 25. Yeah. <laughs> be weird. We played the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yes, we did. Oh, we have really stuff in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We have items. So yeah. Vote for us. <laughs> did y'all play the actual ceremony? Uh, not the actual ceremony. You know, we just played. It's uh, like an MTV Live thing. Oh, sure. Okay. It's like yeah, crazy. and then there's a there's a Warped Tour exhibit. There's, there's yeah. two things. Yeah. There's a Warped Tour exhibit currently that I think Ian's bass is in. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's like a time capsule. Play your drum. Well, there's a time capsule that we did. That, so that was like 15 years ago, 20 years ago. That was a Warped Tour. It wasn't a full exhibit, but it was just like a piece, and it had some stuff. And I have a bass drum in there, and they put it away, and I think they'll bring it back in like 20 yeah. years or something. That'll the Warped really Tour cool. is gonna be like 50. So. Yeah. Well, hey guys, thank you very much <clears throat> for no sitting down and chatting with me. This is Newfound Glory. I'm Andrew Green. We'll check you out later.